they, they, they just announced that, like, the executive producer of Anomalisa, he's doing another stop-motion animated film, but this time it's going to be about Michael Jackson's monkey. Bubbles? Yeah, Bubbles. I, Ooh, Michael stop Jackson's mo monkey. Yeah. I would love to see that, actually. <laughs> They're making a stop-motion animated film about Bubbles, the monkey. That'd be cool. I'd like to see that. It's Journey Through the Jungle. <laughs> to finally become Michael Jackson's pet. Oh, my. Be the journey to become Michael Jackson's pet. <laughs> that was yes. a wonderful journey indeed. Just like Curious George. <laughs> <laughs> Curious Bubbles. Curious <laughs> Bubbles? <laughs> I can make you curious. Come here, Bubbles. <laughs> okay. I have no little boy, so Bubbles will do. There can be only one. They're here. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Go ahead. Make my day. Cinema Royale. Hello, welcome to Cinema Royale. I'm your host, Mike Mixtape, and we are here to talk about Scooby-Doo, but first we're going to talk and introduce the co-host and the special guest on the podcast tonight, the Brotherhood of Cinema slash Sisterhood of Cinema, you know the peeps. So first up, we got Devin Cook, our temp co-host of the podcast. Hi, I'm here to talk about Scooby-Doo, and here, I'll just, get, I'll just give you a hand right now. Yay! <laughs> Keep in mind, she did say a hand. She didn't say two. <laughs> if you want me to go grab my other hand, though, it's in my room. <laughs> <laughs> of course. The man in the middle is Matt Brunet, also known as Animat. Well, I'm telling Scoob, the show's already starting and I don't know what to say. How am I going to start? I'm completely lost. <laughs> <laughs> That's God. a really good impression. Oh, like, really. thanks, man. I have been practicing a little. <laughs> and our special guest tonight is Taylor Wyatt, also known as Y Boy. <laughs> Is he alive? Oh. You there? Hello, everybody. I've reviewed every single Scooby Doo movie ever, and I have no life. That's all you need to know about me. Yay! Oh, Rich. <laughs> Sadness. Sadness. I'll give you a hug. You want a hug? <laughs> no. Only Scooby Doo can give me hugs. Okay. I live for do. <laughs> All for the do covering me. All the doo doo? <laughs> All the doo doo. <laughs> Are you gonna get it with the Scooby Doopy Doopy? <laughs> with the Scooby Scooby Doopy Doopy. <laughs> oh, Cinema Royale. Poopy Poopy Doo. Where are you? We got to <laughs> scoop you up now. Because we can count on you. Scoopy poop. I know you'll catch that poopy. <laughs> Cinema Royale, where we keep it classy. That's the motto of this podcast. We keep it classy here. Yep. Anyways, yes, yeah, Scooby Doo is a topic for tonight. Uh, we, uh. <laughs> Uh, we're talking about Scooby-Doo tonight. Everything Scooby-Doo, not just movies. We're talking about the TV shows, whatever else in the Scooby-Doo franchise. Uh, we, f I figure we start off with the basics. Basically, when and what did we start with when it comes to Scooby-Doo? What was our first time with Scooby-Doo? Um, I think I'm going to start off, honestly. like I remember during my youth, like there was a period when I would watch like all the classic stuff like i had a period when i was watching all the hanna barbera shows i was watching the looney tunes like uh, the classic looney tunes cartoons like there was a period like 
I basically grew up with a lot of the TV classics and a lot of the cartoon classics. And Disney, of course, is on the side. Uh, but I would say that the first one that I was ever introduced was actually with a pup named Scooby-Doo. And, uh, like, this was back during the period, like, in the late 80s, when there was a massive trend going on to, like, babyfy or to kidify uh, popular icons that made famous with Muppet Babies. And there were, like, plenty of other stuff as well that was doing it, like uh, Tom and Jerry Kids and stuff like that. But a puppet named Scooby-Doo was... An was an or, like, or another example would be Yo Yogi, but... A pup named Scooby Doo is another is one of the more popular examples, considering that it really was a long running show, and like it does it like it does like a lot more similar things to to like the original Scooby Doo show. But what I remember more is that it's a lot more cartoonier, and that's basically the thing is that this is a lot more cartoonier, and they keep the characters more basic uh, than they previously were. Um, like and but they do like even though they're more one dimensional, they gave them more of a personality from when when I remember. Like uh, Daphne is more the beauty queen. Uh, Velma is the brainiacs. Shag well, like Shaggy and Scooby, they, they've always been the same since the very beginning. So mm -hmm. th there wasn't really much change there. And Freddy, I remember the one he he really stood out among the rest because he was the most different in a pup named Scooby Doo because like he's more like he tries to be the leader, but I remember he all like he has this mortal enemy that he always blames on. I, I'm trying, uh, like, I'm trying to remember what his name was. Red herring or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was red herring. Yeah. yeah, red herring. Like he all like his goal. Like one day he would love to catch red herring, do something bad. Mm -hmm. And that's like so. Red herring is in a way is like kind of the bully of like the recurring bully of the ep like of the whole thing and like he's kind of like this punk like this big buffy punk kid and like <laughs> Fred, like freddy always wants a chance to like try to catch him and like he would all like every single enemy that they catch like every single monster like the first one that he or like eventually he'll go and put put the blame on red herring <laughs> uh so yeah, that's basically from what I remember with the pup named Scooby Doo. It's definitely out of out of all the series, is probably the one that's the more cartoonier than the others. But definitely, but I would say like it is a pretty good show. Like I, I do remember, it is an enjoyable show nonetheless. Um, I will admit, with me, I grew up with the Hanna Barbera. I did grow up with a lot of those, like I, like Tom and Jerry. Scooby-Doo and um, like certain ones like I know like the Jetsons a little bit or maybe not the Jetsons Flintstones a little bit but I was like I kind of dabbled in it so and the ironically though my favorite was Tom and Jerry but I remember growing up with um, a little bit of the original show and a little bit of um, the I always forget I think it's the Scooby and Scrappy sh I was, yeah, Scrappy yeah. Show Scooby and Scrappy Show yeah yeah, I grew up with that, too. I remember those two in particular. I don't remember the in other incarnations very well. But um, those two I just remember um, more, maybe because I heard the theme song so many times as a kid of the original show. It's not even funny. So I always remember that more than the actual show itself. But I will say, too, another thing that made me remember Scooby-Doo, which is, of course, the live-action movie... <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, that's kind of the biggest memory I have as far as Scooby Doo is concerned. But I remember loving the original show and this and hating Scrappy Doo. That yeah. Bastard could get run over with a truck for just all. Out of just out of curiosity, <laughs> is uh, is Scooby and Scrap like I'm trying to remember is Scooby uh, the Scooby and Scrappy show? Is that the one where like? It only, like, it doesn't have all the characters, but it only has a few. Like, it has Shaggy, but with a red shirt for some reason. It has Daphne. And then there's, a, like, this weird little kid with a yellow oh. hoodie that looks like, um, that looks like Donny that. Osmond Flynn. Yeah, yeah, that is the 13 <laughs> Ghosts of Scooby-Doo. <laughs> oh, the 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo, okay. <laughs> yeah. That's what I remember. Like, I keep, every time I see that, that kid, I, every time I see him, it was like, who is this kid? Why is he like all the others? He's only in the 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo. 
I'm here to replace Boba. I'm Boba if I if Boba was Toad. <laughs> of course. <laughs> That's the best way to describe him. He's he's Velma if Velma was somehow Toad and looks like Don uh, like Donny Osmond as a kid. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh that, that sort of directly links to old, like my past with Scooby Doo. Like the shows that I really remember most is the Thirteen Ghosts of Scooby Doo, which introduced me to more of the bad side of Scooby Doo. And where are you, Scooby Doo? Because I was born in the early '90s, so I was more in tune with like the reruns of all the Han- Han- Hanna Barbera cartoons, and I got really in tune with the much more slower pace of that show, which sort of made me like into mysteries and all that sort of stuff. The biggest memory that I have with Scooby-Doo is Scooby-Doo and the Cyber Chase, one of the MOOC animation movies, because I watched that movie about a hundred times as a kid. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm shocked that I didn't run that tape like thin and just destroyed it how many times I watched it. It's just so cool. Scooby-Doo video games. Awesome. <laughs> I Are you sure that's a good combination to uh, do in video games? <laughs> really? You just asked that? <laughs> Is it a good idea to mix these two things? I don't know. <laughs> I would say, if you've. Well, I haven't seen the movie, so I can't tell you. So, even the crap in it. Yeah. yeah, well, I think it was a good mixture overall, even though, like, the whole mystery aspect was kind of just okay. Was it the whole answer being baseball? Just the answer is baseball if you ever see the movie. Baseball? And you'll just know who exactly it is. Oh, yeah. The movie is Special Island. Uh, it just encapsulate why I love Scooby Doo so much. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, like I will. Yeah, probably. Like I said, like the live action Scooby Doo is my. I remember growing up with that, watching it at once, and going, "Okay, maybe I'm a little bit done with Scooby Doo right now." <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. how did you last me? What? Well, <laughs> that was a similar thought for everybody. <laughs> probably lost a lot of people. Yeah, I even guess. as a kid, I remember seeing that, and I was just looking at it going, like, and I remember, like, I've seen a lot of Scooby Doo at that point, and I was just looking at it going, it's like, something's not right. <laughs> it's like, something doesn't seem to connect well, something doesn't feel like Scooby Doo here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, See, my family is all about Scooby Doo. We used to watch it all the time. We uh, Scooby Doo's a Great Dane, and we used to raise Great Danes at home, so we have Great Danes at home. And so it was kind of cool. Oh, Scooby Doo! He's a Great Dane. It's all that stuff. So I remember watching a pup named Scooby Doo, like Matt said. Um, that was a great show I used to watch. Uh, but I remember the most. I remember watching um, Scooby Doo. Uh, and the Re- Reluctant Werewolf. That was on TV. Yes, I remember. Yeah, yeah. That that I remember watching a lot as a kid on TV. There was a there was a block at one point. USA was showing Scooby Doo stuff as well. So I was just watching it on and off. You know, maybe I've seen the original one, but I always remember Scooby Doo goes to Hollywood. I remember watching that too. There's yeah. I've seen a lot of it as a kid. So I I grew up with Scooby Doo a lot, and then of course like. We all said it. the live action one rolls around. I was around twelve when it came out. I was like, "Oh, a live action movie! I gotta see this." And I ended up buying it on DVD later. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a loser for having it on DVD. What? There's a reason why eBay exists. Mike. Yeah. It wasn't recently. It was just like it wasn't like hey. eBay. I was like in the store, like, "Hmm, should I get Scooby Doo here? I'll take it. Put it in the cart." No, but I mean now. Why do you still have it now? What are the fun he I'm, I'm, put, I'm not putting my collection on eBay. I'm not, this is part of my collection. I love these. These and they still have value to me. All right, I'm, I have these. I have these for a reason in my life. 
This is my childhood. I can't leave them apart, Matt. Don't you understand? <laughs> sure you can. Just make me come into your place and I'll just get rid of it for you. Or oh, better yet, just throw them out the window. Actually, that's a better idea. <laughs> yeah. Let hey, the I raccoons will... get it. <laughs> Ooh, that's a... <laughs> yeah. Oh, the pick of the DVD. Um... Hey, I... I'll justify that you can own the sequel and it's okay, but the first one, please check it out the window. I, I will help you. <laughs> I'll put um, yeah. that out the window along with my prosthesis. So there you go. <laughs> You'll have to go grab it with me. <laughs> what? What makes? What do we like about Scooby Doo? As a whole, what, what, why are we attracted to Scooby Doo? What was the elements of Scooby Doo that we liked? Um, I think it, I think that's an easy answer. It's the characters, hands down. The like, the the first major thing is the characters. Rather it be like, um, like I think we we pretty much enjoy Scooby Doo as an entire group. Like, sure, people are gonna have their individual likings. Like, a lot of people will like Shaggy, a lot of people will like Scooby, a lot of people will like Velma. But, like, as an entire group, like, that's what makes it more admirable. Like, we all want to, like, we all want, like, us and our group of friends to be, like, you know, working together as a team to, like, help, like, you know, to help out solve crimes and, like, take action, battling monsters and stuff. In a way, like, Scooby Doo kind of, like, the, the Scooby gang kind of reflects upon that. And um, plus the fact that they do bring, like, we do, they not only bring, they, not only do they bring in a lot of the mystery and, like, like you, they pretty much go out and try to solve the case, like, as a whole team. But also, like, there's also the humor, considering that um, the, like, definitely from Shaggy and Scooby, they do bring in a lot of the laughs and a lot of the humor, like, um, showing that they, they are the group, like, considering what they have to deal with, they are the group that's, like, pretty much scared and pretty much being chicken. And also, like, they love food. And that, that in a way, like, for many people, like, it may sound dumb, but, like, there's a bit of relatability to Shaggy and Scooby in that sense. Like, when you're scared and, like, when you want to have food instead of, like, facing monsters and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I also have to agree with that, or at least, um, I will say, like, I remember watching, like, I remembered the characters more than anything else, like, if, like, because I know the writing, especially with the first two, with the original show, the writing is so easy that everybody can figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Like, the, the writing is just, it, it, like, you literally don't have to watch every episode and you still get the plot. It's formulaic. It's, it's formulaic, yes, but... I think what makes it work, though, is the characters, yeah. Like, uh, I love, like, for me, I know my personal favorites are Velma, Shaggy, and Scooby. Those are my three favorites. I love Velma because she's intelligent and usually can figure out exactly what to do. Or with, yeah, Scooby and Shaggy, they, they just love food. I mean, they're, they, they're, the com- they're the comic reliefs of the show, and they're hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Who's like a little giant sandwich that goes up to your head? <laughs> we I all like that, but it would obviously fall that. over. Just squish it down. And then it goes red. Yeah. But yeah, the build up of Max, like, point on the team dynamic, I think that, yeah, that is, like, the main draw of the series. Like,. Like Hannah Barbera, like running a bunch of other shows that piggybacked off Scooby Doo. Like Josie and the Pussycat, mm-hmm. Captain Caveman, yeah. Ruby Crater, or something like that. There's these Technically, all these there's shows, also, like, the same, sort of there's like, also uh, Ghostbusters, but like um, uh, the Ruby Spears Ghostbusters. That Mystery Inc. sort of has. Mm hmm. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you see the point. Without that sort of team dynamic, all those other shows just sort of disappeared into the noise, and Scooby Doo just stayed around for. Yeah, I'm not even, not even sure how long it's been around. Uh, 19, what? It came out in '69, so yeah. I'm, to, I'm not good at math. Who has it? Wait, do I have a calculator? It's like almost. Well, it's already 
47 years yeah. right now. So, so I was Thank close. You. Almost 50. Yeah, almost. Hey, almost. Yeah, almost 50. It's close I mean, to 50. Yeah. Holy crap, yeah. It's good 47 there. years. 47 years. Yep. Uh, yep. So, alright, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try something here. What is your least favorite character in Scooby-Doo? Uh, oh, oh, that's such a hard question for me. I, I can't. I don't, uh, I don't know. Maybe I, I guess I can go. Um, actually, I will admit my least favorite. Any is Daphne. two characters that I would. Well, I like the most. I don't care for Daphne very much. She's just there. <laughs> a lot I think of people she's just see there, and she's just. She, I, I, you know, honestly, a lot of people would say, like, either Daphne or Fred or stuff like that. It's kind of fu funny to mention, considering how they're the least to do nothing. Yet they're always the ones that, like, people are aware that, um, like, they're pretty much do that, like, while while the others are so actually solving the mysteries, people always assume Fred and Daphne, well, you know, they they have their own little thing on the side. They never said it, but we know what's going on. <laughs> But it's always ironic. But, like, there's always seems to be some kind of formula that Daphne always activates some kind of trap. And honestly, the weirdest thing is that I have been seeing so many people come out saying that they don't necessarily care much for Daphne. Yeah. And they, they find Velma really hot. Yeah. And, like, honestly, like, of course they made Daphne the pretty one. But I guess, like, they kind of made Daphne out of people's league in a way. So that's why Velma seems more attractive, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's kind of weird, I, honestly. I honestly believe it's because she's so intelligent. I mean, yeah, Daphne is pretty. But that's all that there is to her. She's kind of the damsel distress kind of pretty yeah. person. But Velma is actually intelligent. She uh, is active. She tries to solve the mysteries. And for the most part, she pretty much does. And, and it's just, there's then again, we all have a bit of a nerd in ourselves that is attracted to the nerd. Just pointing yeah. that out. There's a lot of people attracted to the nerd, so I think that's the reason. Yeah, I always imagine, you know, honestly, like, with me, I guess in the original team in general, I would probably go with Fred. Because, like, in a way, like, Fred wants to be the leader, but in all honesty, what else does he do other than pointing where others go and say let's split up and search for clues he uh, drives the car drives the car he drives the mystery yeah. machine he drives, he drives. Fred, just, just, stay, just stay in the car the just stay yes. in there keep it warm he's the show Fred is the chauffeur yes. <laughs> that's what he is he's the chauffeur with the ascot but then again actually like <laughs> There are actually two kinds of people. The ones who who expect that Daphne and Fred are do are like doing their own little thing, or like there there's also the other things that Daphne is just searching around and Fred is just thinking about boys. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> fan theories. Uh, oh those fan theories. But I guess, like, in gen... But then, like, uh, outside yeah. of that, when you look at all the other characters... Yeah, and stuff yeah for that, me, if we're, if we're talking, you, like, the original cast, they are just sort of, sort of like, standard sort of characters all around. Even though in the later incarnation, they gave Daphne to sort of, like, what I call MacGyver Daphne sort of thing, and what, what's new scooby do? where they basically made her, like, oh, oh, I'm locked in here? Well, I have this, like, shoelace and all that, I can easily get out. Just made her, like... E always get caught, but always able to escape as well. Which sort of made her more stupid, in a sense. Because he made her so capable, but still captured all the time, anyways. <laughs> hey, there's a new meme. There's a new meme that's out there. I think they took it from Dragon Ball Z or something. They say, hey, as long as it works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Daphne will for... always just come out like, here, I'll just use my shoe to get out of this door. Hey, as long as it works, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she's always just going to be, like, the more prettier one. Yeah. She's probably going to be, like, the least helpful of the cast over most of the movies. Yeah. Even though that might piss off Daphne fans out there to hear that. Yeah, on, don't worry, Daphne fans. Like, you don't have to listen to either Devin or Taylor. You know, if you know to make things to make things better, to give light on Daphne, I'd bang her. <laughs> uh, 
some good light on her. That's too sure, it's alright. I'm going for personality, you're just going for sex. <laughs> I would prefer Velma over Daffy, to be honest. I'm a Velma person. Uh, that's what I said, Go like, everybody's going for fiction. Velma over Daphne. It's, it's all about the Or geek. the best thing. It's all about geek Or, you culture. know, the best thing. Or, we all know the best answer. Por que no las dos? <laughs> yeah, this is. We'll be it's... eating some tacos tonight! <laughs> yeah, it's weird considering for Velma. Like, like, as we all have been saying, like, Velma is, like, the more preferred that we all like. And in the later incarnations, the cards sort of made her, like, more prettier and all that. Like in Mystery Incorporated, they gave her like little red bows in her hair and all that, and gave her like a much more slender model to her, just to make her more physically it's, attractive. In a sense. Yeah, it's it's nowadays in culture, like in geek culture, you know, Velma's like in the lighter light now, cause in limelight, cause you know, oh, geeky chicks are really hot now. Oh, nerdy chicks are, you know, hot. You know, smart, intelligence, it's all there. So Velma just got that, you know. Girls cosplay as her, you know, and a lot of sexy girls do that. And it's just like, it's just, that's how Velma's being looked upon now. I mean, she's a smart character, of course, but she's, goddamn, those people dress it up as Velma. Wow. But going, <sighs> no, I know what you mean, man, but going back into, like, the most hated character, but, like, in all honesty, like, the characters in general, they're pretty standard. Like, other than that, like, nobody really hates, uh, like, the original Scooby-Doo gang. That's just yeah. among them who's, like, the least favorite and stuff. Now, the one that people hate, like, the one that people legit hate, for me, I would actually go with, uh, Flim Flam, believe it or not, because, like, <laughs> he's just, like, he, like, he appears in the 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo, and that's it. And it's like, who oh is this god. dumb little kid? Oh my god. It's like, you know, it's like I'm watching, <laughs> you know, like, I, like I know I keep repeating that he's just like he's like another toad, but it's like I'm it's like I'm watching the Super Mario Brothers Super <laughs> Show and they brought back in Toad for some reason. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm totally with you, Matt. I hated Flim Flam too, and I just sort of in my own review review of the show, I basically just sort of sort of like and and I basically saying like Flim Flam is basically like. The fill-in spot for any kid watching the show is like, oh wow, I can be Flim Flam solving the case with the gang. That's so awesome. And if Flim Flam is hard like, enough, you could be Flim Flam too. <laughs> <laughs> and he just pulls something. Flim Flam is in another castle. <laughs> <laughs> and just pulls something out of his pocket. Like, oh, that's a and just Flim Flam is just the perfect sort of con artist. Like pulls something out of his hoodie. He's like, oh yep, I got the key to the mystery right here. I can easily yep. solve it, guys. And it was like, Flam Flam, you're awesome. No, he's not. <laughs> Stop lying, guys. Flam Flam made that awesome. Oh, um, hey, I still. It's probably mine. It's just so lame like that. <laughs> I still don't like. I still hate Scrappy. Scrappy Doo can get run over with a truck. I, I really can't stand his voice, and I can't stand it. How he's just like, oh yeah, I'm gonna help with the gang. Hey, look, it's it's Scooby. I'm an important member of the team, Puppy Power. <laughs> That's what I was waiting for, actually, to oh, somebody to mention Scrappy, because he's like, yes. it, he's the most like most his popularity like is down for the count and is very disliked among the franchise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. just like. You know, it's like, oh my god, so what if you're the nephew of, of Scooby-Doo? So what if you idolize him? So what if you're so tough and roughy-tuffy? Just shut up and go in the corner. No, actually, I wouldn't mind putting him shut in up, the corner. Shut, shut up, Scrappy. Shut up, Scrappy. You're no Robin. And I, I don't Get in the back of the van with Fred. I mean the Muppets, Robin. No. Hey, if anybody has a kennel, I will put him at the, I will put him on the road, and he can stay in there, yeah. or or he can pee on Daphne, and then we'll throw her out, throw him out the car. Hello. Yeah, that's just like why. That, that <laughs> but, was just weird. No, but I will, you know honestly, if there is one thing that I will give the movie credit, like the original Scooby, the 2002 Scooby Doo movie credit, I do 
You know, I do find it clever how they actually made Scrappy do the villain, considering how he is the most hated character, and they decided to go and actually make him a villain. Now, the explanation yeah. why he's a villain is kind of stupid, but oh, yeah. uh, the fact, like the fact that they actually did make Scrappy a villain, considering he is the most hated, that I find it is an interesting twist. Like, I will give them credit that. Yeah. Other, other than that, I don't know. I don't like looking back at it now. I don't know what other good things to say about it. I was yeah. going to say, yeah, that was probably the one thing I liked about the movie, but the explanation was really terrible. It's like, yeah. okay, you, what the hell is that weird pyramid thing? Seriously? You're sucking yeah. souls into a pyramid? <laughs> what the hell? Are we in Egypt? <laughs> God damn it, we're in a theme park in Egypt. Yeah. And we're going to suck your souls. I, I gotta... Like, I... <laughs> Honestly, the only thing that I could think of right now is, um, like, somehow, the only thing that I can imagine, well, the only thing that I can think of right now, and that's because it's the Nostalgia Critics' fault, is that now, every time I think about, like, Scrappy-Doo at the end of the movie when he's giant, I can only imagine, like, the, the like, the Pumbaa voice, like, Timon! I'm here to steal your soul, Timon! <laughs> and it's true, like, like, when he's the beast, like, but actually, oddly enough, he does actually. So, somehow they made Scrappy transform into freaking Tiny from the Crash Bandicoot games. But yeah. uh, like, you know, like when he becomes like this giant monster, he does sound like uh, freaking Poopa. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my god! I can't believe I never thought about that watching the movie again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I can't stop thinking that now. Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's brilliant. That is beautiful. Uh, magical. Uh, Ma <laughs> magic. Brought to you by Animat. <laughs> when he was a young Scrappy Doo. When I was a young Scrappy Doo. Very nice. Yes. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 The the, the live action movie. Oh my God. I, I, I was just, like, all over that shit when it came out. I was like, man, I'm going to go see it in the theaters. I'm going to get it on DVD. I'm going to buy the soundtrack. I'm a huge fan of it. Then afterwards, you're like, no. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. He said yes. He said yes. He has the freaking DVD to prove it. Well, he has the DVD, but does he have the soundtrack? Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, do you really want me to dig it out? Yeah. Uh, no. I do. I do have the you soundtrack. You just did, Mike. I have the soundtrack. My two. You just listen to the soundtrack. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's full of two thousands <laughs> pop. Um, Taylor, Matt, we should run. <laughs> <laughs> it's, but it was weird. That the but you know, the Scooby Doo movie was written, written by uh, the screenplay was, written by James Gunn, who later write uh, and do Guardians of the Galaxy. So yeah. that I thought was back, but that still didn't make the movie. Well, he learned. Well, that only tells us he learned. He learned from his mistakes. Doesn't change yeah. the fact that it it'll improves the Scooby Doo movie. Yeah, and it doesn't help that James Gunn was contractually obligated to do the Scooby Doo movie, so he wasn't. Just because it has, it has like a writer with project. a project. Yeah, just because it has a writer with a ma name, doesn't mean that. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't mean... Hold on. Where, what was that? Sorry. Let me read that. <laughs> Just because it has a familiar name in the writing credits doesn't mean it's a good thing. I could say the same... You know, I could say the same thing. Like, oh, look, it's a familiar... Hey, look, the, the new Scooby-Doo movie has a familiar name. Oh, it's Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I would go to that. Uh, I would want to see Tommy Wiseau Scooby-Doo. <laughs> oh my god, you brought up a terrible example because I actually want to okay, see that. Oh, high school, Oh, nice. <laughs> <All> high school, <laughs> oh. Anyways, well, Ma, how was your sex life? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So, we don't like the first one. What about the sequel? Oh. I like the sequel. Yeah, I, I hate the sequel. Like, I'm not going to say that it's great, but honestly, it's surprisingly better than I expected to be. 
and I expect it to suck terribly, but you know, it's you know, it's pretty you know, it's decent. For what it is, it's pretty decent. And like in turn like the one thing that it does capture is at least it has the tone of the Scooby Doo movies. Like it, it definitely has that and you know, it is admirable that they do pay homage to many of the classic monsters that did come from uh, the original Scooby Doo shows, and like they did, and the one thing they did fix up is that they did make the characters freaking nicer. <laughs> like at least they are working. <laughs> oh, you thought Fred was nicer? Oh yeah. Wait, Fred was well, nice? Well, no, but I mean, like they're they not. Talk about nice. him doing behind their backs. Oh, well, them are nice. Was so nice of him. Oh, no. No, I, like at least Velma is nicer. <laughs> Daphne is kind of nicer. They're not they're not total douchebags. Like even well, if they seem like bitch, at least it's a step higher. It's, it's like a step lower than being complete douchebags. Well, here, I'm going to get the sequel of douchebags. monsters unleashed. I just really despise that sort of movie. But I've heard from all my fans and all that that they do like the movie. I can totally see why. It does have that sort of tone down and all that. I just find it, it's totally rehashing the idea that Scooby Doo Cyber Chase completely did right. And just sort of like goofified and all that. Made all the monsters just sort of goofy like, whoa, 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 whoa. We're, def- we're big, losing stupid monsters now <laughs> that make fart jokes everywhere. <laughs> It just sort of takes what was actually like cool and creepy from the past and making it just child friendly, just easy to digest now. You know, honestly, just this is of... the first time that I've ever heard that as a criticism. That <laughs> Scooby Doo <laughs> Monsters Unleashed is not good because Scooby Doo and the Cyber Chase did it better. I've <laughs> never heard that before. Oh my god. <laughs> yes, See... I'm original. Yeah, well, Whatever. I'll give you that. That is true. I. I will say this, though. The sequel, at the very least, had less fart jokes that made me happy. I can't oh, yeah, that's right. This one, this oh, yeah, it, it, it just had that huge flaming fart joke. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's and right. Kicking the balls. Uh, yeah, I remember that. Here, have this. <laughs> I literally was... No, no, I did not mean that. If I really, really movie, yep. <laughs> at least with the fart jokes in the second one, they tried to make it work. I'm not saying it did, but they tried. <laughs> well, the scene uh... where Shaggy gets boobs. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, oh that I scene. Keep forgetting that that's a scene that actually happened. Yeah, yeah. that scene. Oh my god! And then the Tasmanian <laughs> Devil shows up. It turns into the Tasmanian <laughs> Devil. Yeah, it was actually originally going to be the drawn animation version of Scooby Doo in that scene, but they changed it for Tasmanian Devil. Not sure why though. I remember I was actually they got to give the animators more... something after they did um they did back in action, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. didn't look like the animation from that. <laughs> Actually, speaking of which, Shaggy, Shaggy and Scooby actually did make a cameo in Back in Action. Yeah, they did. Yeah, I remember yes. that. Holy crap, I did remember. They're, yes. are, were they talking with their agent or something like that? No, they're that? talking to yeah, their... They're talking to like Casey the cars- Kasem. The, the cartoon oh, versions okay, of them. Okay. Oh. Now and it Scooby's makes going to bite his neck off. Yeah. Yeah, it's like... That's what I remember. It was a pissed off Scooby. Yeah, pissed off Shaggy. He's like, didn't like his portrayal in the movie. <laughs> that was a good cameo. I like that. Yeah, that was a good cameo. Yeah. Give him props for back in action for that. Um, uh, but then, then it started spawning off a bunch of animated movies, direct to video, and all that stuff. And I'm, it's hard to keep, I couldn't even catch up with them. Any question point. for everybody? What's the question? Yeah. Uh, the question is, what's the most recent Scooby Doo movie or show you've seen so far? Recent. I guess there's like 25 yeah. different movies, oh, uh, 13 God. different TV adaptations. Most recent? Uh, uh, I don't know. Like, I think I'm gonna be honest. I kind of, 
I haven't seen anything Scooby Doo in a long, long time. I think like the last one that I've legit watched was probably What's New Scooby Doo, and that's pretty much it. And like maybe, maybe technically, the last time would have been um, uh, what was it? The, the Scooby Doo Two Monsters Unleashed, but yeah. that that was pretty much it. So yeah, I would say like Monsters Unleashed and uh, What's New Scooby Doo. I actually watched just rec- just a little while back. I watched the Samurai Sword and Camp Scare, and nice. I I thought it was funny. Like yeah, because I just was kind of choosing just randomly, and then I watched the live action movies. But um, I had to admit, watching Camp Scare and Samurai Sword, I thought I was gonna like Samurai Sword at first, just because it seemed so different. It had like ninjas, and it was. And it was just seemed more, like, out of its, like, I guess, out of its world in, its, in a sense. Yeah. It was a, that, that, I thought I was going to like that more. But then I watched it, and I was like, I don't know. I, I mean, it's too weird. <laughs> <laughs> it just, it felt too weird to me. Yeah. But then I found I loved Camp Scare, which I thought worked better as a movie, just because it was able to use the Scooby-Doo formula much in a better setting. Mm-hmm. That's why I liked that one better. I was like, oh, hey, and this one's actually funnier. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, good. I could... And then I was like, oh, good, we're going to go up to the um, other camp and we're going to try to find the water monsters. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> yeah, camp is a really good one. It's one of my favorite movies. Oh, that was yeah, that was great. <laughs> uh, but but those are, I. But I have to admit, at least with the direct, the, like the direct the video, I just knew they existed. I never watched them except for these past two, so they they just existed in my mind. I didn't watch them. I didn't pursue them. So. Yeah, yeah basically, like what scoop what pretty much Warner Brothers is doing with Scooby-Doo is kind of like what they're doing with uh, the other popular uh, Hanna-Barbera properties like Scooby-Doo, The Flintstones, and Tom and Jerry. They're basically just using them for random directed DVD films that yeah. pretty much nobody cares about. And especially with Scooby-Doo, somehow, somehow they like to make them cross over with the most random group of people. I remember in recent years they did make a crossover with Scooby-Doo and Kiss, and then there's also Scooby-Doo yep. with the WWE wrestling <laughs> yeah. stars, which they also yep. did with the Flintstones. Yeah. And yep. coming soon, of course they're gonna do yeah. it with Surf's Up. <laughs> because yeah, that makes Pictures sense. Animation never ceases to amaze me with their stupidity. <laughs> 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 because sir, sir, why not surf stuff? <laughs> and why not? You know, it's like it actually makes as much sense as freaking Flintstones or Scooby Doo, actually. Yeah. What? Yeah. How else are you gonna cash in? <laughs> you cash in on yeah. who's gonna buy it? Um, <laughs> what about the WWE fans, boy? <laughs> well, I, I, I've actually talked with you know honestly I did talk with the WWE fans they hate WWE studios yeah <laughs> that's the problem so I don't know who they're doing it for <laughs> they, they are making a sequel to Scooby Doo Wrestlemania Mystery that's coming out this year kidding. yeah no, they are and see the kidding. next one up in- <laughs> now I want to see the first one are you kidding me <laughs> I think I it's a pretty good movie on a goofy sort of angle. Can I have my dub? Can I have my WWE crossing over with freaking Land Before Time now? <laughs> Anything is possible. I want my Land Before Time 15 WWE <laughs> dinosaur hey, wrestling. Hey, it can happen. Hey. <laughs> Just- Gets in rock and roll mystery. There's like Dragon Ball Z fight scenes in that, so Land Before Time can show up in there. Why not? I don't know. For some odd reason, now I'm just trying to picture Barney, Land Before Time, and WWE. Don't ask how that works, but somebody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's also. How about we ask our friend John Cena? Da, 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 da. <laughs> 
<laughs> there's a couple other ones that are upcoming from from the uh, direct uh, DVD uh, direct video. There's the there's a Lego Scooby Doo movie coming out this year. Uh, oh yeah. Lego well, Scooby Doo. Like, yeah, because apparently, like, like I, honestly, I never really understood the trend of like the like the different Lego movies of different properties. I, I like, I get the Lego movie, but like the other stuff, like Lego star Wars, Lego Lord of the Rings. Yeah. It's like, eh, I don't necessarily get it. So it's like, really? Why also Scooby-Doo? Like, what's yeah. The... Yeah. But... Instead of starting off with the games and then it just sort of built up to actual movies and all that. And with the Lego movie coming out, it just seemed like big returns basically. And now yeah, also like, like... Also, like advertisement for the actual Legos that are coming out, it's like Lego Multiverse, whatever it's called, because we have oh, yeah, some new characters and all that. Yeah, yeah. It was advertisement. It's, yeah, it's, just, it's just like something for the kids. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's and for then, the kids. And then they announced something for the kids to choke on. <laughs> Quite literally, choke on Legos. <laughs> Um, but then next year we're going to have Scooby-Doo Wild West. Wild West. I'll yeah, be passing oh, on are that. Are they getting Will Smith? <laughs> <laughs> wild Wild West. Wookie Wild, Wookie Wild. Wild Wild West. Mm. <laughs> Jim West, Desperado. <laughs> oh no, now I'm I get the song stuck in my head. God damn it, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> See, Matt's the... Oh, yes. Actually, I can't do it. Actually, that would be an interesting combo, the Scooby version of it. Like me! Hey, <laughs> the Wild Wild <laughs> that, that could be a plausible reference it could make. <laughs> It's made more obscure Why? references in the past. Yeah, that would be like a speed tribute to that film, Wow Wow West. <laughs> Maybe it's in the song. <laughs> um. Oh, yeah, that was so funny. <laughs> Mike, if you fall so any more backwards, you'll be on the floor. I hope you know that. <laughs> I, I tipped. I have tipped before in this chair. Oh my god, I fell on my ass once enough. <laughs> Um, was uh, it on sc- camera? No. Damn it. No, it I wasn't. I uh, video proof. Oh. Uh, Scooby Doo. It's it's a time. Is it timeless? Is does it? Why does it still resonate with us? Res- resonate with everyone over the years. It's like, it's some some say it's formulae. Some say it's doing the same thing over and over. It hasn't changed one bit. Why is it, you know, popular enough nowadays? What? Actually, what? Mike, uh, just going back to the previous things, I'm surprised that you didn't, like, in terms of the upcoming Scooby-Doo projects, I'm surprised that you have le- yet to mention, like, the movie. there's going to be a legit Scooby-Doo movie. Like, yeah. yeah. The yeah, theatrical was... animated one. Yeah, 2018. That's going to be pretty interesting, because I, I think, forget. like, other than Scooby-Doo himself, I don't think we have yet to see, like, a legit computer animated Scooby, when you think about it. No, not really. <laughs> I was gonna say we've seen him with puppets now, apparently. Oh He's yeah, the puppet the in Scooby Doo Adventures: The Mystery Map. Oh yeah, yes. with, with the and it had the pup named Scooby Doo look for the character. So it's just like, is it a lost pup named Scooby Doo episode in puppet it, form? It basically feels like that. If you actually watch the episode, it's like sticking two pup named Scooby Doo episodes together to make a movie. <laughs> Now, I, that's the only thing that I can imagine is just like is Scoob, like for some uh, out of nowhere Scooby Doo is just mauling every single other character like Scooby is going insane <laughs> and then you just pan back it's actually Red Herring doing all the puppetry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm kind of shocked they didn't show Red Herring in, in the movie. Oh, that would have been a nice callback to him. That would be a that would be an interesting reference. Yeah. I mean, come on, you had the, the pub name Scooby-Doo look. Why couldn't you keep it going with that? Yeah. But, but yeah, Scooby-Doo is coming back uh, for another feature. Um, trying to see the news about it. 
They, well, there is a schedule. They are releasing it in September 2018. Right. Yeah. It's a couple of years, so they'll probably... Which honestly, th- that which honestly, that's going to be really interesting, because we're going to see, because um, from what I could tell, like now during that time, we're going to see two Halloween movies pretty much trying to duke it out. We got Scooby Doo versus Hotel Transylvania Three. That's going to be oh, interesting bro, to see how yeah. it's going to clash in at the box office. Oh yeah, definitely. Ooh, like Hotel Transylvania has been like growing in sort of popularity over the years. It's Hotel Transylvania Two. And Scooby Doo has its whole fan base behind it, so it's just going to be interesting to see how the box office sort of like calculates that, everything. Yeah, and especially I know for a fact the third one is not going to have Jandy Tartakovsky, so like I don't know if that's going to pretty much handicap it, but we'll see how how it goes. Like when it's going to clash together. Yeah. Have to see. Hold on. Interesting just battle. Just checking something here. Uh... Oh, maybe not. I was checking the director's name because I was looking at the director of the upcoming Scooby-Doo movie and it said something about him doing Space Jam. And I was just like, the, the director of Space Jam is directing? I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that reminds me, Space Jam 2 is coming soon. Wait, is, it, is it official? I'm not, I'm not sure. I think it's official. I don't think it's official. I, I've heard no, it. I don't think I heard it's official. I, heard yeah, it's I like, have no I idea. I just, heard, I just heard it whispers. Yeah, all I heard is just stuff like like only LeBron James is interested. That's it. <laughs> only LeBron That's... James like, please, can I have a movie? <laughs> I'll do anything. I'll even do Space Jam 2. <laughs> <laughs> just give least... me a movie. <laughs> That's what he said exactly, and then people misquoted. I was like, he, is it Space Jam 2? Space Jam 2? <laughs> people, apparently people want more Space Jam and want more bunny boobies with Miss Lola over here. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone wants the bunny boobies, except for most people. <laughs> except for most people. Women. <laughs> I'm sure that I'm sure people will find a poor excuse that involves Zootopia somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it worked for Judy Hill. Yeah. And look at her little bunny boobies. <laughs> oh my god. You see it on the internet all the time. <laughs> oh my god. Are you worried about bunny boobies now, Mike? <laughs> no. He... No, he's like. <laughs> we can yeah, bring it back to the studio talking about doggy boobies. Doggy boobies. Yeah, he's gonna find the bunny boobies now. I I, I know. No, he's I've seen the bunny boobies. I've seen Space Jam. <laughs> no, I'm just looking. Okay, I've yeah, seen looked... the bunny boobies. I've seen Playboy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think they're in good hands when it comes to the new Scooby Doo movie because the director has experience with previous Scooby Doo movies actually. He's done. Oh, good. Uh, Tony. I don't want to butcher his last name so bad. Tony Carvone. He's done uh, Scooby Doo and Kiss, Rock and Roll Mystery. He did uh, Tom and Jerry Spy Quest, The Flintstones and WWE, T- Tom and Jerry and the Lost Dragon, <laughs> Tom and Jerry and the Giant Adventure, Tom and Jerry and Robin Hood and His Merry Mice, uh, Tom and Jerry and the Wizard of Oz, The Looney Tunes Show. Tommy Jerry meets Sherlock Holmes. I don't have confidence in that. I thought you said that that it's in good hands. (laughs) He's had experience with Scooby Doo. He has experience with Scooby Doo projects, just not the good ones. Scooby Doo, (laughs) Abraka Doo. Um, so he's done that. He's done three. Wait, two. Wait, did I count two films? What the fuck? Yeah, he's you done said two... he had experience with Scooby Doo movies. You mentioned two. Tom and Jerry. <laughs> yeah, I was looking. And also Flintstones WWE. <laughs> oh yeah, it's in really good hands now. <laughs> really excited now. Well, I'm so excited for Tom and Jerry. The whatever sequel coming just up. Just say, Mike. The more you say, the more movies you yeah. list. The more I'm yeah. excited for Hotel Transylvania 3. Just yeah. saying. Yeah. yeah, the only I reason see. that Kiss and the Rock and Roll Mystery was good because it was just so insanely <laughs> stupid. <laughs> the Dragon Ball Z uh, fight scenes. 
Where's Let's Hotel see. Transylvania 3? Let's see. He also <laughs> did... fight scenes. <laughs> he also did uh, Back at the Barnyard, Tom and Jerry Tales, Tom and Jerry the Nutcracker Tale. Uh, Hotel Transylvania the... 3. I'm buying my ticket right now. Uh, the Karate Guard, <laughs> Daffy Duck for President, Duck Dodgers, <gasps> Baby Blues, Little Go okay, well, Deep, okay, and three Dodgers. episodes of Animaniacs. Duck Dodgers at least. <laughs> okay, we got one... <laughs> <laughs> One good thing that they go. Like, okay, oh, we got Duck Dodgers. <laughs> we got oh, Duck Dodgers. It's got Duck Dodgers. <laughs> yes, he directed a good majority of those. Uh, he wrote actually 25 episodes of, the, of Duck Dodgers. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, he gets. I don't know. It, the new movie could work out. I mean, at least it's got to be better than the, the two of us. Yeah. Well. <laughs> That book, that, that's like comparing. That's like comparing shit to a carcass, which yeah. it smells worse. Yeah. I was just pointing that. Yeah. You're, you're comparing shit to a carcass at the end of the road. You are you are fucked either way. Don't try to make this any better. Uh, if Matt, you and I can go see Hotel Transylvania. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. Yeah. For me, I feel like I'm in a rock and a hard place. Yeah, and I've honestly <laughs> seen worse. <laughs> I've honestly seen worse. The Scooby Doo movie that has least the least potential, or the <laughs> dumb Adam Sandler cartoon number four. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Uh. Make up your mind now. <laughs> I already um, made up my mind. I'll probably just go uh, be seeing both. Any, okay. Anything else you want to talk about when it comes to Scooby Doo? What, what, uh, there's like, it's, just, it's like the, this topic is like broad enough you can talk about anything when it comes to Scooby Doo. I mean, we've seen the television shows, we've seen the specials, we've seen the movies, we talked about the characters. I mean, what makes Scooby Doo Scooby Doo besides what we talked about? It's just really. Fascinating. Think about this. What makes Scooby Doo timeless? I think it's pretty much what, like, yeah. what I've previously stated. Mostly the characters and the feel and like the relatability of like having you and your friends work together to solve mysteries and stuff like yeah. that. I think that's what really uh, makes Scooby Doo timeless. I mean, like, right. we've seen it all the time. Like, they've done hundreds and literally hundreds of episodes where they pull off the same formula over and over and over again, but people keep coming back watching because of the beloved characters and also, like, seeing them, you know, sol like, seeing them solve these creative mysteries, yeah. you know? Like, to, like, just see them get into these sticky situations and try to get, you know, see, you know, and seeing them, like, solve the case and stuff, like, it's rewarding, it's a lot of fun, it's enjoyable. Yeah. That, you know, and, that's what makes it work. And that sort of team dynamic of love just doesn't, like, fade with time, because that's sort of something that most people want, that most people like. Mo a lot of people just like to be in a group of friends and all that, just coming together on any sort of project, whether it be a mystery or some school project and all that. And we would just like to have friends that would just come together like Mystery Inc. <laughs> yeah, I agree there. Yeah. I agree that. Yeah, it, it's true. It's but. The, did Scooby Doo actually brought out you know us liking mysteries as overall genre? Did because mysteries were kind of a thing that not a lot of kids got into until Scooby Doo. Actually, the funny thing is, when I thought of mysteries as a kid, I always thought of three things: Nancy Drew, Scooby Doo, and the Hardy Boys. <laughs> yeah, I grew up with all of those. I read those. I read all those books. Blame my mother. She had almost every book in my room. It was crazy. And I, um, and I read all those, almost all of them. It was, and, um, I think it was just funny that, <laughs> what the hell, Mike? Why are you trying to look like an alien? You're, you're gonna ruin those priceless DVDs. No, you're oh, gonna no. ruin those priceless glasses. What the? <laughs> Fuck the DVDs. What the hell? <laughs> It's Scooby Vision. Scooby Vision. I'm so mean. Scooby Vision. Yeah. 
But see, that's the thing. It got me into mysteries. That's the thing that was could be did with me. It got me into mysteries. You know, more of the, you know, those kind of shows. You know, in general, in movies. You know, just got this could be do. Got me into his mysteries and, of course, the talking dog. You, you, you can't go wrong with a talking dog. No, you can't go wrong with a talking dog and a guy with an app with this large appetite. Well, he's a he's a stoner, of course. He's he's yeah. got munchies. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> I thought that was already established a long time ago. I mean, keep in mind, it was released in 1969. That was the major hype of the hippie generation, man. <laughs> <laughs> but apparently he's nice. also vegan. <laughs> well, yeah, that's because, um, well, okay, in reality, that's because um, the, his, <laughs> wait, well, who's his voice again? Casey Kasem. Yeah, the, his voice, Casey Kasem, became a vegan, and he wants, like, his character Shaggy to look like that as well. I know, that's But then I he that. eats meat in all his sandwiches. Exactly. And it's, it's the fact they do. <laughs> so he's a Jeez, pretty he's crappy not. vegan. You know, the funny thing is, I love the one fact that I learned about Casey Kasem. The only reason he quit in 1995 was because Shaggy was going to be in a Burger King commercial. Uh, yeah, the Scooby-Doo gang were going to uh, be in the... Burger King commercial, and he quit. It's like, mm. fuck. Yeah, that makes <laughs> sense. Yeah. I just was like, oh wow, this is what happens when you try to commercialize. You lose your voice actor. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Like, if you don't respect the character, you're not gonna respect the voice actor. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. It's, I just thought it was funny. I think what? How long did he quit for? Like ten years or something like that. And the only reason he came back was just because, let's make um, Shaggy a vegetarian again. Yeah. There. All yeah. these are so... <laughs> that I thought was awesome. And weird. Yeah. I, did, I did, yeah. actually did like Casey Kasem as Shaggy, because uh, there's a good prospect of a radio personality going to be a voice actor. You know, that transition was a nice transition. You know, uh -huh. people. Yeah, and especially with Casey Kasem, he has, like, a pretty distinctive voice that, like, with Shaggy, he proved that he can actually, you know, spice it up a bit and, like, change it in ways that it sounds like an original character. So, like, he, defi like, he definitely has a voice that's, you know, like, the, he already has a golden voice that's suited for radio, so why not also do it for voice acting? Hmm. I think it works out well. Definitely, like... Shaggy was always the one character I really liked, not only because of his memorable voice, but because he has an interesting personality, even though he's a freaking stoner that just loves to eat. <laughs> I mean, it still works. His character's simple, but his voice actor really made it work. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on, his voice can be imitated, as demonstrated by Animat over here. <laughs> Let's see. A lot of thanks to him. Except the only difference is that Sadly, I'm not a vegan. <laughs> Casey Kasem did the voice from 69 to 97 and came back in 2002 and did it until 2009. Oh. Yeah, after his tragic... Oh, his death. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was fucked up. Like, if you learned the... I actually learned about what happened. Like, how he, he died from... He, he was, like, having... I don't remember which disease it was. But he actually he was having he was having problems with his second wife, who would not let his kids see his their own father at his deathbed. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I, I remember the controversy. Apparently, like the rest of his family was completely messed up. Oh yeah, wow. yeah. His family was just completely messed up, and it. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I read into it, and I was like, good lord. Good, just good lord. I, yeah. I pr you can pr rest in peace. Because you're away from your fucked up family. <laughs> it, well, now we got Matthew Lillard from live action movies doing the voice of Scooby Doo. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I give, like, I, I, give him math, I give him props because he did, a do, did do a good sh shaggy in the films. And I thought. Hey, why not? 
Yeah. And now he's just a shaggy and everything else. <laughs> I can't argue that. Yeah. <laughs> just he did a good job. job. He gets there. Yep. Just, that's that's the only job you'll get, man. You you, you just be shaggy. You don't do anything else. Yeah. Just be shaggy. <laughs> you can't look you like you have to. Another roll. roll. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, wait. I think it is an appropriate time. Let's see what. Yeah, this is probably gonna work perfectly if I can do this right. We uh, I know. James is not here with us because he's away, of course, but he did leave us a recorded voice message for us to listen to. We've done this in the past before. Uh, I'll play it, and we you can tell me the pause or whenever to reply or react to what he says. Okay, so... Okay, here, minus 11. I'm trying to see how this is going to work. And of course, he's got a musical cue at the beginning, like so. And to get you in the mood a little bit, here is some DJ Hamitude unplugged. Scooby Dooby Doo, where are you? We got some work to do now. Scooby Dooby Doo, where are you? We need some help from you now. Come on, Scooby Doo, I see you. Pretending you got a sliver.
uh, what uh, the formula had to offer uh, to try and figure out for yourself uh, who the bad guy was by the end of the episode. It's always somebody. It's always somebody in uh, in a in a costume or a mask or something so silly like that. And they always want money or power or what have you. And it actually, uh, the, there is a very funny theory uh, that surrounds that. I don't know if anyone has brought it up yet, but we haven't. there's a theory that says with the original Scooby Doo show, Where Are You? And it must exist in a near future or an alternate uh, universe where the economy is in the is in the dank because if you look at every episode it's always a broken down sir a broken down circus or a busted up old hotel or an old castle or some creepy location uh, a ghost town and and uh, whoever the villain is they're obviously brilliant um so you have to assume that maybe maybe this is some sort of atlas shrugged type of universe where all the brilliant people are being punished or brought down by regulations or something like that but whatever it is uh, there is no need uh, there is uh, no room for brilliance in this in this universe so they have to uh, devolve into to thuggery I don't think it's that simple really but um, but it's kind of a fun theory to entertain and when you look at the original show, they they had their recipe set up for them. It was always the same every episode. They'd show up. The Scooby Gang would show up at a at a location. It would turn out that um, there's a ghost or a monster haunting the place and driving business away from uh, from whatever. And. Um, the gang would at some point split up and look for clues. Shaggy and Scooby would go looking for food. Uh, Fred and the girls would go the other way. And there were uh, there were a lot of fan theories that hashed around that. Okay, Shaggy and Scooby are constantly stoned. Fred's taking the girls this way so we can shag them up. Um, yeah, a lot of jokes. A lot of jokes that... Uh, fans came up with as the show went on but eventually they did find a few clues and that would lead that would lead them to saying hey let's build a trap uh, and the trap would execute Shaggy and Scooby would screw it up somehow but then they bumble and catch the bad guy and that was always that was a that was always a formula that worked all the way through the Scooby Doo show uh, Scooby and Shaggy, and oftentimes I noticed when they uh, the the better times the the highlights of uh, of the Scooby Doo universe were where they they tried to deviate from the formula, but not too too much. And when I say deviate from the formula, I I don't mean like uh, as Scooby Doo and the Ghoul School, where they made a TV movie where Scooby and Shaggy start uh, 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 becoming a teacher, uh, PE teachers for the off, uh, for the belated offspring of the Adams family, or <laughs> the Boo Brothers, which I uh, I couldn't even like spend Do five minutes watching. watching that. Brothers. I mean, <laughs> the very subtle formula changes where. Uh, where the littlest different, where the, the littlest chink in the chain can make the biggest difference of all. Um, around the 90s, they were having, uh, they were having a Scooby-Doo revival, if you were, as it were, and with that came, um, with that came a certain experiment called Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island. Yes. That film, yeah, we haven't talked about that film strangely enough, so thank oh, yeah, God James brought that up. Yeah, I did mention it once, it, once very early. <laughs> it was, early on, but yeah. It's it's weird because Zombie Island is arguably the best direct DVD or movies from Scooby Doo. Like the first one's always the best one, I guess. A lot of people liked it. 
Yeah, it, it's the one that really made made the most sense. The one that like really yeah. got an interest and that really explored around the lore of Scooby Doo and like their origins. It's kind of like a pre in a way. It's like a prequel to like the whole Scooby Doo thing. I remember what I remember yeah. when I was watching it as a kid, and then suddenly they were like. Fred got a present for everyone, and it's apparently the mystery machine. And I was there like, wait, this is new? Wait, that's new to them? Oh my god, it's a prequel. It's how everybody got grouped together. That's awesome. Yeah. And, like, it def- and I remember it actually definitely is, like, um, they do actually play with the tones. Like, I remember it is legit funny, and, like, it can be legit mysterious, and, like, it can be legit scary, honestly. Like yeah. they, they do play around those tones very well, and it works out. I have nothing to add to that. That's exactly how I feel. But it's one of the reasons why it's one of the more like well known and like more critically acclaimed in the Scooby Doo franchise. Like, as most Scooby Doo fans, and that would be like the number one favorite film for most of them, this Scooby Doo fan included. This is that sort of like mixture of tones and all that, and that's sort of like. Uh, back, well, back watch like more like mystery, mystery in the background. Like this is like one of the one screen movies like there's where there's actual killing of people. Like in the whole backstory of Zombie Island, like a whole cr- group of witches gets basically eaten by alligators. It gets that dark. But that's just going on. Yeah. Night. I, I guess that's the only place we're going dark to a classic cartoon franchise can work out it's yeah. it's scared, it scared the hell out of me as a kid I was just like whoa these zombies are just scaring the fuck out of me holy crap um I remember too as Billy West did the voice of Shaggy at that time it was weird it was the one time thing Billy West doing it yeah and he he was okay as Shaggy it just, it just felt off because Billy West was everywhere He's no Casey Kasem. Yeah. No. Nah, it, was, it was okay at most. I was just like, Billy West, is that you? I could totally tell your voice. <laughs> but, you know what James had said about the film. And, uh, <laughs> I remember the ads for this thing. And, uh, it just sort of looked like, okay, it's an expanded episode of the show, only with, uh, a lot more money put into it. You know, you look at the old episodes of the TV show and you're like, wow, what is this, a $20 budget right here per episode? No, uh, this was this was something that was putting the heart and soul into the animation and as well as the story writing. And from what I saw um, in, the, in the advertisements, the biggest change of all was they, they advertise in the advertisement saying, this time the monsters are real and I remember watching that and singing uh yeah right and then I sat down and watched the movie and guess what the zombies are real Ash, mind blown (laughs) uh for once in their in their careers uh, you know, pretending like the ghoul school and reluctant werewolf and all that stuff really didn't exist. Uh, this is... This really was where it felt fresh. This was where it felt like, okay, the gang is all together and they're up against something real. And... I, uh... I gotta say, it... It... Uh, it was a very welcome update for the formula. It um, uh, it it didn't deviate so so much that it was that it was foreign to the viewer at all. And for that, I really really appreciated it. And I liked the direction that it was going. I I think the the filmmakers uh, behind those direct video sequels. Uh, the, the direct-to-video films, uh, they they acknowledge that, hey, you know what, we have something here, a slight deviation in the formula, let's give the fans something that's got a lot more effort put into it, let's make these feature length, let's, uh, let's have the gang go up against some real supernatural elements, and 
then that resulted in uh, films such as Scooby Doo and the Witch's Ghost, um, Scooby Doo and the Alien Invaders, and to a, to a certain extent, uh, Scooby Doo and the Cyber Chase, which is bending more towards science fiction. But hey, you know what? Science fiction also counts as being a fantastic element. So, uh, they get sucked inside of a video game. What's more fantastic than that? And whatever formula that uh, that um, that they had here, it worked. And what do you know? They had to play this out too. Let me get something straight here. By that I mean um, the original show formula was was played out. You know, Daphne as a sort of a damsel in distress type character had to be updated. Fred uh, maybe a little bit cockier now than he was before. That's understandable. Um, Felma was Felma all the way through, so I thought that I thought that was perfectly fine. Shaggy and Scooby are still all their their lovable selves. Um, <laughs> that didn't need changing at all. Um, so there's a comfortable update here, and then a certain pair of movies happen. Scooby Doo, the live action Scooby Doo movies. We all, you guys have probably beaten these to a pulp before I even had the chance to say anything here, depending on what, to, uh, what time in the, uh, the podcast you decide to play this recording. But I remember sitting through the first one and being so, so insulted. I think, I think the best way to describe it was, uh, you know, there was one, there was one fan of the film that actually uh, put together what everything that was wrong with the movie and it said no people don't get the people don't understand people who don't like this movie don't understand that it's a, supposed to be a spoof of scooby-doo i mean come on can you, take this, can you not yeah. take this seriously and my response to that is no if i wanted to watch a spoof of scooby-doo i would watch something that would clearly indicate that it's a spoof right there in the title. No, this is something that's supposed to be canon. This is supposed to be part of the franchise. I'm not I'm not buying it because you know, you got you got stoner jokes that are gonna, that are gonna fly over the, the heads of the kids watching and to the adults watching. They're just gonna be like, is that really necessary? And as for the characters, only half the actors in there seem to be in character or, they, or have a grasp of the character that they were playing. But I'm looking back on it and I'm just saying, okay, Freddie Prince Jr. is playing himself, dressed up as Freddie. Um, Sarah Michelle Gellar is just buffy dressed up as Deb. As Shaggy and Scooby were themselves, um, that, that worked. Linda Carlini, not so bad as as Vilma. But over overall, it was just a, a sad sort of experience. And why the hell is Scrappy a bad guy? Even if you don't like Scrappy, that's not something he would do. Please. So, thanks to this podcast, I sat down and watched the second one, Monsters Unleashed. And... <laughs> Oh boy. Yeah. Um, Devin, if you're listening to this, I did read your yeah. reviews. Uh, you posted them on Facebook. I understand uh, the whole guilty pleasure thing, but for me, watching this, yeah, it was technically a better movie. Um, and, uh, and, but it's better in the sense that, hey, if the first film was having somebody giving you a nookie while holding your head underwater until you're gasping for air. Uh, then, th then this film is the coming up. The slight bit of relief that you get. And that's only slight. We still have a lot of the same problems. We still have all the all the cheap fart jokes in there. They toned down on 
with stoner jokes, but I, you ever have you ever have a little thing called character development? Uh, try too hard to to come in and make and make the formula better when actually that is quite detrimental. Yeah, that was one thing that I felt that the films could have could have uh, taken back a notch, but. Um, and the last point that I want to bring up, Scooby Doo wearing an afro. Uh, yes. <laughs> Looks yeah. like a bad male transvestite Macy Gray. <laughs> <laughs> it just didn't work. And, and why are all the bad guys that they put through, that they put in jail over the years, hanging out in a club? Shouldn't they be arrested? It's it's a villain club. <sighs> so. <laughs> that, was a, that was all a big collective mess, but focusing back on the on the TV shows, we had What's New Scooby Doo, which which adopted the same old formula with just a a better budget, and that was that was definitely a a, a favorable show in my opinion. You followed that up with uh, Shaggy and Scooby Doo Get a Clue, which kind of made kind of made me miss the whole group dynamic that they had you know focusing on those two characters at once it's it's not entirely all that all a, all that interesting as it could be i missed the gang there i really did so we followed it up with scooby doo mystery incorporated which dares to take a very dead on serious approach to the franchise and in a way, it kind of worked, but um, it also had its drawbacks. For once, you had a story that you couldn't just uh, tune in for one episode for. You had to tune in episode by episode by episode to catch That's true. to catch up with the gang and and uh, see what all was happening. And I liked the shipping of uh, of Shaggy and Thelma together. That was that was to me that kind of worked because you got the stoner that guy happened? and the geek. Yeah, well, they yeah. Work together. Yeah. They work together nicely. Yeah. Um, maybe it got a little too serious, though, and that's where it kind of lo- it uh, kind of lost me because I tuned back in at one point in the second season, and I I realized Scooby's got a love interest who's a copper spaniel, and there's one scene where uh, she almost gets killed in. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, falling out of a falling out of a helicopter, and uh, for the rest of the for a good chunk of the rest of the show, she's in a coma. And I'm just thinking, what? Whoa, whoa! How how butch did how butch did we need to get here? This is uh, what is this? The original plan for the show where they where uh, Bill Hanna and Joe Barbera wanted to make this more serious. Yeah, that's actually the thing. That what Scooby Doo? Where are you? They wanted to. Uh, they, it was initially not focused on the dog. It was just the gang in general. It was supposed to be more serious, like Johnny Quest. So, um, yeah, um, Mystery Incorporated was okay. And this uh, this brings me to the most recent film that we. That we, no, so, not recent film, but the yeah. show that we have. Uh, Be cool, Scooby Doo, which oh, to God. me really works and really has me coming back for more. What? Because it does, uh, it does follow the same old formula, but it knows when to spin things up. It, it knows when uh, to make Velma a little bit more of a wackier character. It knows when to. Uh, to give Scooby himself a subplot, it knows when to. Uh, it, it knows where to deviate itself, and people made fun of the designs. They said, "Oh, it looks like Seth MacFarlane uh, made fun of the, made fun of Scooby Doo here in that one uh, that one Family Guy episode." Yeah, I understand that, but I can let that slide because yeah, guess what? I'm an adult. Um, I'm not going to pick on this too much. So, 
Um, I look forward to how this show finishes out. I look forward to what the future holds. Um, I'm not focused too much on the direct-to-video films as, as I used to because really they went... They, they played themselves out uh, just by reverting back to the old formula uh, in feature-length form. Nothing's, nothing's quite as interesting as it once was. And no, I haven't seen the WrestleMania movie either. I'm staying away from that one. Uh, they can have uh, res- uh, the wrestlers can have Surf Sub Two for all I care. That looks like a better film, really. Um, so yeah, that's that's my history with the series. I think it. Um, I I appreciate the different directions that it goes in. And I look forward to what they do in the future. So that's my spiel. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this. And I'll catch you all next time. Ciao for now, yo. Comic Con Coring! Ah, yes. That, that is interesting because Be Cool Scooby Doo. Yeah, I mean, it's. I, I watched a couple episodes of Be Cool Scooby Doo and it was okay at most. It wasn't. I was actually watching an episode and they actually developed uh, Shaggy as a character, more likely. There was an episode focused around Shaggy. And I remember that one the most. I was like, holy crap, they got balls up to develop some characters for once. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's okay. I never saw it, so I have no input on it. <laughs> yeah. I would agree with you, Mike. I've, I've seen it. I've done a review on it. And it's just mostly okay. There's some good bits that's some <laughs> bad bits to it. It's just basically a scooter formula, but filled with more like meta jokes and all that sort of stuff. Like, like we really understand the formula now, guys. Wink, wink, wink. Yeah, wink, well, wink, nudge, nudge, say no more. Yeah, you know, for the sounds of things, like, it, it sounds like, a, like, admittedly, it does sound better. Yeah. Than what I would expect, but then again, like it sounds, it sounds rather forgettable. So I'm not missing much. Yeah, yeah you're not really missing anything. You just skip it. Like, you just saw the movies; a... they're like much higher budget, anyways. <laughs> you got better animation, yeah. obviously. Mm. Yeah. Uh, any other thoughts on Scooby Doo? Uh, honestly, I think we've covered a lot of it. I think we would be good. Yeah. I got nothing, so... Oh, crap! Wait a minute, there is one. Oh, Where'd oh, you no. forget? There is, there is one character I think we all completely forgot, but he definitely is one of the best characters in there. How the fridge did we forget about freaking Vincent Price? Oh, uh, <laughs> I remember 13 Ghosts of Scooters. I yeah. actually made a comment on Vincent Price in my review. A completely positive comment, but I got tons of negative hit stations saying, like, how dare you insult Vincent Price? Just even mentioning him. Uh, uh, I just get yeah, negative that's... comments. Oh, uh, yeah. 13 got, ghosts. I don't know. In a way, it feels, like, it, it feels like the show says, we're sorry that we have Flynn Flynn Flan. Here's Vincent Price. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. yeah, here's Vincent Price for you. Please take our offering. <laughs> yeah, I totally forgot about that. It's been a while since I've seen Thirteen Ghosts of Scooby Doo, so maybe, maybe I'll rewatch that. It was a short series, so yeah, it's literally only thirteen episodes, with only exactly. about eleven ghosts captured. <laughs> what did you get the other two? What the fuck? Yeah, apparently I need to check it out. <laughs> it's not There's that, a lot it's of not things. Good. I personally just don't. I think it's a bad show. <laughs> Just stick with the stick with the classics. Stick with yeah. the classics. Thanks. Thanks Just for all the faith, you guys. Love you all. You're welcome. Yeah. Like recommendations all around. <laughs> Woohoo. <laughs> Just Sc- Scooby Doo will always be with us, and hopefully they do something amazing for the 50th anniversary in 2019. Ooh. I mean, yep. we're almost there. 
almost there. We're soon there, we're soon there. Yeah, we're well, almost well, there, folks. We'll be old, but we're like, hey, it's 50 years of Scooby Doo. It's 50 years, and unfortunately, we have to have a delay with the movie oh, no. beforehand. <laughs> Well, the, the movie coming up in 2018, and then what, the 50th? Hmm. Or maybe it might be delayed, it'd be like, mm, we're having some issues, we'll push it back a year. Yeah, maybe we should do that, we should delay it a year, and we'll put it in 2019. Well, yeah, because we don't want to compete with Hotel Transylvania 3, <laughs> we'll just push it back to 2019. No, 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 I want this <laughs> battle to happen. No, 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 no. Don't push it to 2019. <laughs> I want this clash of the dumb Halloween the animated films to get up together. Yeah, it'd honestly be a very interesting matchup. Not the movies, just to see the fight. <laughs> You're going to be the one with the popcorn watching to see who ha who's going to win. <laughs> I know. Like, this, you know, it's going to be exactly... It's a. It's gonna. I, I'm gonna feel exactly like how I did with the Ghostbusters trailer. I'm not here for the movie. I'm just gonna see the audience's reaction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's where the real entertainment is. That yeah, is true. That, that, that's why I don't watch trailers that often. <laughs> see, I'm the smart one. I choose to stay out of it. So. <laughs> just stay out of it. Yes, the epic battle of Transylvania 3 vs. Scooby-Doo will be coming soon. Um, yeah, but yeah, that's... Transylvania <laughs> vs. Scooby-Doo win! Uh, Adam Sandler vs. Hera-Barbera. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is gonna be an interesting battle. Yeah. I just want to see them wrestle themselves to the ground. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally, wrestle. Just like there's an upcoming sequel, well, WrestleMania 2, it's gonna be well, dope. If we're, if we're getting a penguin wrestling, surfing weird shit movie, then anything can happen at this point. That's why I want my Land Before Time 15 WrestleMania. Yeah. <laughs> wrestle surfing. Wrestle surfing. You know, I've always wanted to wrestle With surfing. With John Cena, the shark tooth. You know, for some odd reason, I want to see John Cena and Adam Sandler w <laughs> go into a battle. So that's, gonna, that's gonna legit happen. That can happen. Yeah. Trust yeah, me, I can so... I mean, like, they're, they're one step... Like, WWE is one step closer to making something with Happy Madison Productions. Yeah. yeah that like sounds about right. <laughs> And then it'll be released onto Netflix. Yay! <laughs> oh, yeah, put so it on Netflix. somewhere where we don't have to care. <laughs> hey, I will watch it. I don't have Netflix, so I'm in the clear. <laughs> I'm not an idiot. Thank you very much. That is it for our Scooby Doo episodes. If we missed anything or you want to talk about something about Scooby Doo, please leave it in the comments below. And uh, I'm going to say. Say goodbye to Scooby because we won't see him again unless we do a sequel episode, which we won't do because we're done with him. We're done with him completely. It's uh. <laughs> you hurt <laughs> Scooby. <laughs> you hurt Scooby so bad. Scooby He's in a coma hurt. now. <laughs> He's so in a mean. coma. <laughs> That's a pleasant sight. <laughs> Ricky, Just <laughs> Ricky, help. <laughs> We're ending the episode with Scooby abuse. You are so... so Ricky, nice. my rings! My rings! Now, don't worry, guys. If you want to see this in a more positive light, just think of that as the 2002 Scooby. <laughs> That's even better. <laughs> Mike is abusing the 2002 Scooby. That's right. Good job. It's, it's the Scooby that sucker... Was it, was, it, was it Fred that he sucker punched? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Brennan, no, that that's the best in your movie. Oh, yeah. Scooby, is that you? <laughs> like, that was good. Was that was just... that scene. <laughs> oh, yeah, but there was just like the nose that tells them all. Like, hey. oh, oh, bang. This is why you don't insult Grandma. Grandma yeah. will get you. <laughs> Break oh, it. You gonna do it, Mike? You gonna do uh, it? Oh, Break it. Oh, 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 it's bending. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it just. Not a map. You want to do him? 
Why didn't you do it on camera? Oh, you did it. Why are you off camera, man? You're an idiot. You're an idiot. <laughs> Get off camera. Been... You... Are you gonna put? What are you doing? Are you gonna... Don't yeah, cut yourself, shit. Mike. <laughs> yeah, Mike. The movie's suicide. not worth it. Yeah, you ruined that priceless DVD. Now it's worthless, even worthless than before. What happened, <laughs> Mike? Had... What about your sentimentals? It's sentimental <laughs> bullshit. Don't even start. I mean... Fuck the sentimental bullshit. Bullshit at you people. Bullshit. Don't worry, I can send you my DVD. <laughs> then the sentiment will be back. There we go, you don't want to send it to me. <laughs> well, you can always see that's what eBay's for. You can buy another copy. <laughs> don't want to buy another copy for all I know. That's what stabby people just have a time. I'm done, I'm done. Scooby-Doo, Scooby-Doo could live. I mean, the live action movies, that's just... Die. Uh, it's, it, it's okay, Mike, we'll all give you hugs after. We'll give you a hug, man. Because the movies have destroyed us in many ways. <laughs> They've caused the hurricanes, they caused yeah. all the natural disasters. Well, you could also put... Well, Matt, did you put it on your um, top ten worst live... Like worst live action adaptations or something. I have it? not actually. Why well, didn't you? you're an idiot? You didn't put. It. <laughs> you don't know more about in this. Are been wor Devin, there are worse. Trust that me. Is, uh, yeah, okay, there definitely are. There's even worse Scooby Doo movies. <laughs> like oh, trust say. Yogi Bear. <laughs> trust me, I take Scooby Doo more than freaking Yogi Bear. Trust yeah. me. Oh, uh, Yogi Bear so boring. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, the last Airbender sucked ass. Save Airbender. the park. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yes, yes. This has been Cinema Royale. Thanks for listening. One crazy episode after another. Uh, what's your favorite Scooby Doo show, movie, whatever? What do you like about Scooby Doo? Comment below. Make sure you subscribe. I'm getting close to 500 subscribers, people. Please subscribe. I'm like at eight more people please eight of you just subscribe to my channel i will post this glorious podcast for you people i'll give you bonus stuff everything is available on my channel for you to watch it's for free just subscribe it's not that hard it's not that hard it's no it's not, not hard, that people. it's a button people it's a button just, oh yeah just press the button button's right just, down there just just press button. Button. just do just yeah, links to the doobly doo. Yes, yeah, so I do all the links to doobly doo. Thanks for, thanks for Y boy to coming on talking about Scooby Doo films, having a good time with us. Uh, <laughs> make sure you subscribe to him. He's got Toon Grin. He's got awesome reviews. He he has reviewed all the Scooby Doo films. Go check that yes, out. We. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's the poor he's the poor set that went through all the movies. <laughs> He's the poor sap, though. He's so nice to him. Be yeah. nice to our guest. <laughs> but thankfully, most of the Scooby Doo movies are just okay. <laughs> Only a few of them made you want to throw them out the window. Well, Mike already destroyed the live action movie, so that that, that satisfies my life. I mean, that one was honestly the live action was just more okay to me. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> maybe I should have kept it. Maybe I should have kept it. Oh, uh, there went, maybe there's some bonus features. Wait, wait, was there bonus features on it? Hold on. Maybe, hold on. Oh, oh crap, there was a commentary on here. I want to listen to the commentary, god damn it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want to see all the boosty. How did they get Rowan <laughs> Atkinson into this? You know, that's a good question. I mean, I would want to know how they got Rowan Atkinson in this. Come on. <laughs> that would have been... Ah, oh, shoot. Maybe I should have... God damn it. Oh, well. Uh... <laughs> oh, well, just we'll be back I got something surprise for you next time I'm not going to say what it is but I have something planned for you guys next time other than thanks for listening and good night see you later dudes night. see ya <laughs> <laughs> Mike <laughs> <laughs> are you are you satisfied? I'm like, are you Damn satisfied it. with your life now? Are you satisfied with your care? <laughs>
At least I got the sequel. At least I got the sequel. I mean, that, that's always nice. You want, you want to see the sequel? The sequel's always nice. I don't know, Scooby. What about you? What about you? What about you? What about oh, you? no, Mike. Are you doing that, too? Yeah, oh. mine as well. I think that movie's... Worse anyways, so oh, I won't be sad. Oh, this one's rubber. Oh wait, hold on, I fell a crack here. <laughs> oh, oh come man. on. <laughs> why is this did one so the, much harder? Way, did you buy the DVDs for the purpose of this podcast? No, these were in my collection for a while. Ah. Uh, <laughs> and now he destroys them. <laughs> he destroyed them on camera. <laughs> Mike, you can rip them up. No, can't. Oh, there we go. I think, yeah, Where's I think that? so. <laughs> There we go. I was gonna say Matt has. This was more plastic than the other one. Yeah, exactly. This was plastic. Had... The other one was like glass. Trust me, I've had rat. I had ratatouille training. <laughs> I was gonna say, who's the idiot that sent you all the ratatouille DVDs? <laughs> I can't remember. You know who it is. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you're right. Come on. <laughs> yeah, my brain's not turning. Who else has the money to just troll me? Oh yeah, that's true. He sent you also the um what five or so. Death, yeah, the five Cloud <laughs> Two DVDs. And it's we the weirdest thing is that I'm able to sell a Ratatouille DVD on eBay, but not freaking Cloudy Two. Oddly enough. No, <laughs> okay. it's Cloudy Two apparently. <laughs> you know the funny thing is, I was I was at my video um I was at my video store one day, and I saw that they were selling like. A D, like a Blu-ray and a DVD of Cloudy One and Cloudy Two side to side. Guess oh, which one was more expensive? Cloudy Two, I know. Yeah, because <laughs> no, 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 I know because like from like every time I go to like Walmart or something, uh, Cloudy One is always buried beneath like in the realm of the five dollar bins, and somehow they they pl- they put up Cloudy Two for ten bucks because like I guess it's newer. That's it. I don't know. It's not good. Hey, yeah. if I would have had a copy of Cloudy 2, I would have tried to break it. That would have been I don't good. know. Either that or I think they just have too many DVDs in stock. And, like, nobody is really buying them. Yeah. So I, I have no idea. I was going to say, my my stepmom has a copy of the first Cloudy, but not the second one. Yeah, and I, I remember I even... Um, like, even, like, I was interested to see, like, the Black Friday sales and stuff like that and check if there are any DVDs, like, that would be available and stuff. Oddly enough, the only DVDs that I've seen a part of the Black Friday sale are only the ones by Sony Animation, oddly enough. Smurfs, Hotel Transylvania, Cloudy, oh, yeah. Summer Open Seasons. It's, a, it's weird. It's yeah. like, no find them. Yeah. I still haven't get the rest of the open seasons myself. I do plan on reviewing all of them. That's, oh, a, that's, a, that's a classic review of my open season. <laughs> oh, joy. Open season. Open season two, three, then that's the Halloween one because all animated movies need a Halloween version now. Yeah, releasing. Yeah, release. Not release like what? A few weeks ago? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Alpha and Omega now this. <laughs> Why? Oh, uh... Do we? That that's what I'm wondering. Is uh, like, this is honestly something that I'm never going to get. Is the direct to DVD market? Is it still viable? Are people actually buying it? Is, are people getting into it? Like, I get it during the early 2000s and the 90s with the Disney sequels and the Lamb of Four Times, but this, but like, now we're getting Alpha and Omega sequels, Open Season sequels. It's like, why? Yeah. Yeah, I have no idea how it's how it can be viable unless they also put it on Netflix as well. I don't and some sort of streaming service. I have no I idea. I just don't get it. It's just I'm wondering who are they doing this for and who's buying them. Well, I've bought in a few. I was gonna say I'm not buying jack shit. What the hell are you? I'm a connoisseur of budget animation films. <laughs> keyword, keyword being budget. Yeah. Budget. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, Matt, Reasons you just have for release and direct to video. Oh no. A production sure. studio may decide not to generally release a TV show or film for several possible reasons. A low budget, lack of support from a TV network, negative reviews, its controversial nature, or a simple lack of general public interest. A lot of them are bullcrap. 
A lot of them will. Yeah. Oh, because of negative reviews, we can't put them up in theaters. Talk to Frick. Yeah, what happened with Norm of the North, man? Yeah. <laughs> that, that was actually supposed to be straight to DVD. Then one dickbag at Lionsgate thought it was a good idea to release it in theaters. Yeah. Uh, Lionsgate. I always have a fight them on my videos. Keep in mind, keep in mind, Lionsgate is the same people who thought it was a good idea to put Food Fight in theaters. Yeah, Food Fight was in theaters. Oh yeah, <laughs> idiots. Oh, well, Jesus. like that was like in the middle of production and stuff like that. They wanted to release it in theaters, and they got too impatient. That was the yeah. problem. Yeah. <laughs> Should be grateful. <laughs> We saved our lives. We are eternally grateful. <laughs> we saved our lives. We are eternally grateful.